The World Poker Tour is brought to you by ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker. Guaranteed. In Los Angeles, two beautiful chess masters try to steal a high-stakes poker title. It might sound like a Hollywood movie, but not only is it true, it's happening tonight only on the WPT. Seasons, Commerce Casino has held Hollywood's biggest poker party, the WPT Invitational, an event where the stars not only have to look good on the red carpet, but they also need to shine on the green felt. In the past, celebrities like James Woods, Mimi Rogers, Ray Romano, Vince Vaughn, and even Paris Hilton have matched wits with some of the best professional poker players in the world. And this season was no exception as WPT champs played alongside some famous Hollywood locals. But when it comes to the final table, pro players like Barry Greenstein, Freddie Deeb, and Phil Locke have dominated this event. But the WPT Invitational has also had some champs from outside the mainstream, including a charity auction winner and a club WPT qualifier, LaRon Washington, who won his chance at this title for less than $20. And let's not forget, this event has on occasion been an historic one, as in season six when Van Wynn became the first woman to win a WPT title. But pro or amateur, Hollywood celeb or regular Joe, one thing has been a constant over the last nine seasons. While the WPT Invitational starts off as a star-studded party, when the real money comes into sight, making the final table is serious business. WPT Invitational. Day one. Day one. Day one. Day one. In true Hollywood style, the night started with a walk down the red carpet, and the voice of the UFC octagon kick-started the action. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live from the Commerce Casino. for the game to begin. Within minutes, Vince Van Patten would knock out one of the toughest celebrities on hand, UFC champ Randy Couture. Let's get the eye knocked out, Randy. Well, let's get him. <laughs> to try to play a little more aggressively. Works in a cage, it doesn't work at a poker table. While Randy Couture was left hanging out on the sidelines, the rest of the 482 invited pros and celebrities were having a great time. The atmosphere is lively, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Like a zoo in here. Good hand, buddy. Look, that's what happens when you play that, okay? Like, you, have three. you gotta show me if you have four or five. If you, have, if you have four or five, you can do anything. The WPT Invitational is the only WPT title ever captured by a woman, and the ladies were out in full force to take it down again. Sit next to a pretty girl like Tiffany, you get distracted by a poker. Is this a picture? No, it's a camera. I'm having fun. Good hand. The WPT Invitational is fun, but it's also philanthropic, with players encouraged to rebuy in the first four levels, with all the proceeds going to help the less fortunate. Well, I want to first thank all the players that are here today. Thanks to your rebuys tonight, we have raised over $95,000. I just heard that the WPT is going to throw in the last 4700 dollars make it even $100,000. With the rebuy period over and the night progressing, both pros and celebrities started to get eliminated. What happened out there? Um, Jerry Yang, he owned my soul. Well, for me, I was today like freaking when in my table, names that I recognize from TV, from the poker tournaments keep popping up. And I'm like, <laughs> why are they sending the pros to my table? And I just had it absolutely bald. Are you kidding me? I don't really enjoy being on camera, no offense, unless unless I'm playing a character. And uh, see, that's a good sign right there. 
It's divine, it's divine intervention. Is the right light off completely off now, or what? It's good. This is good light for me. It's excellent oh, light okay. for me. Soon, the lights would be turned out on everyone as the day drew to a close, as it became apparent that the pros dominated day one. And it was the first lady of poker, Linda Johnson, at the top spot, with WPT champs Phil Locke and Barry Greenstein sitting in second and third. This is the WPT Invitational. Day two. Well, day two. With the red carpet rolled up and the bar closed down, the mood of the room was a little more serious on day two as players were now in the hunt to make a WPT final table. Tournament director Matt Savage tried to bring a little Hollywood style to the day, but instead got some good-natured ribbing for it. We're going to play this level. One more. We'll take 30 minutes after that. Shuffle up and deal. He lost the bet for sure. You don't just wake up and say, I'm going to wear a spicy pimp purple suit today. Wait, before we do anything, I just want everyone at home to know that Matt said, please take it easy on the suit comments. <laughs> Meanwhile, chip leader and poker pro Linda Johnson kept raking in chips, but looked confused as Matt Savage tried to adjust his look. Although play was underway on day two, Phil Locke, who ended day one second in chips, had yet to arrive. With Phil Locke's stack slowly getting blinded down, the rest of the field joined the battle to cash. Only the top six spots pay in this unique tournament, so the action and bust outs started to come quickly. I got robbed, baby. What am I gonna say, you know what I mean? I'd rather get robbed at a poker game than uh, they go over my house and rob me, you know what I mean? Scotty was out, but Phil Locke's chips were still in. And Phil's best friend, Antonio Esfandiari, was running good, knocking out the grinder's brother, Eric Mizraki. Then it was poker pro Mark Safe's turn to hit the highway as his pocket nines ran into the pocket jacks of actor Ashton Holmes. There was no Hollywood ending for Phil Locke. The former Invitational champ couldn't make it back to the tournament before his chip stack was eliminated in 24th place. Ironically, his highest WPT finish in four years, leaving 23 live players yes. left looking to make it to the final table. The field still included WPT champs Barry Greenstein and Antonio Esfandiari, along with poker pro Dan Highmiller and actor Ashton Holmes. But closing in were two world-class chess players, Grandmaster Almira Skripchenko and Canadian women's chess champ Dinara Kotsieva. One of the biggest hands of the night occurred when day one chip leader poker pro Linda Johnson was up against WSOP bracelet winner Belgium pro Davidi Katai. Linda holding pocket jacks flopped a set with Davidi holding top pair with a queen kicker. The turn put two diamonds on the board, betting all the way Linda continues to fire. Sitting with a flush draw, Davidi calls king of diamonds on the river. Linda bets 100,000, Davidi shoves all in. Linda calls to see her opponent got lucky with a runner-runner flush. Davidi doubles up and Linda is now sitting on a short stack. Antonio Esfandiari also started to sink when he ran into the aces of lawyer and part-time model Damon Schramm. Soon after, Antonio got some chips back as he won a race against Barry Greenstein, knocking Barry out in 14th place. With just a few chips left, Day one chip leader Linda Johnson was dealt her final blow. Poker pro and grandmaster chess champion Almira Skripchenko won a race against Linda's pocket sevens, knocking the first lady of poker out in 13th place. It was poker pro Dan Highmiller's turn as he found himself in a hand with Antonio. With the board showing straight and flush possibilities, Antonio leads out for 92,000. Dan thinks and shoves all in. Antonio calls, revealing he has pocket nines to Dan's pair of deuces. Antonio's looking good to double up and go all the way. Oh. The river comes a miracle, too, giving Dan the winning hand and sending Antonio running out the door in 12th place. Ashton Holmes, the final celebrity standing, fell in ninth place thanks to Damon Schramm's ace queen. In less than an hour, we would have two final eliminations, giving us a final table of players no one would have predicted at the start of day two. A WSOP bracelet winner, Two beautiful chess champions, a former WPT final tableist, a local commerce champ, and a fortunate amateur now find themselves about to fight for the honor of being named a World Poker Tour champion. The makeup of this final table turned out to be a surprise. In fact, our own Vince Van Patten started day two in 47th chip position, which was one spot ahead of poker pro Dan Highmiller, who started 48th in chips. And tonight is sitting at the final table. 
So, Mike, given the pace of this tournament, how do you see things playing out tonight? Well, Kimberly, all six players are very close in chip count. The blinds are starting at 15 and 30,000, where the average chip stack is only just over 700,000. So that means we should expect fast and exciting play tonight with a lot of all-in bets. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, gentlemen. And as I mentioned in the open, one of our final six players is not your average poker player. Almira Skripchenko is also an international master in chess as well as a woman's grandmaster. The question tonight is, can she translate her skills from the chessboard to the green felt? Standing by with Almira is the newest member of the WPT team, sideline reporter and well-respected tournament director, Matt Savage. How are you going to use your chess playing ability to outsmart your opponents here tonight? <laughs> I think my opponents are very tough tonight, so I will try to observe, try to determine what are the like, betting patterns, how do they play, are they changing their strategies. So I think for the moment I will be patient and then uh, adapt myself to, to the table. Yeah, generally in an invitational, you don't see a lot of professionals at the final table, but tonight's field is very tough. How is that going to impact your play? Well, just to have to play better and better. It's, it's a tough table, and uh, no one is here by chance. So everyone worked through the very tough field. So uh, just have to give the best of yourself. All right. Well, good luck to you tonight. Thank you so much. We are just about ready to start the final table of the WPT Invitational here at Commerce Casino. Mike and Vince will be back with the call of the game, brought to you by ClubWPT.com, right after this. Thank goodness, I almost wore the, my blue dress tonight. <laughs> I love to wear the Royal Flush Girls. them up for me. I'm Melissa Grace. We're the Royal Flush Girls. Welcome back to the WPT Invitational. Brought to you by ClubWPT.com. We're just moments away from the start of the final table here at the Commerce Casino. And tonight's players outlasted a field of 482, and it looks like they're all ready to battle for tonight's title, including our chip leader, Damon Schramm. Now, Damon is a lawyer who also does some part-time modeling on the side. You would think he lives here in Hollywood, but he actually calls Adina, Minnesota, his home. In seat six is the player we're watching closely tonight, the Grandmaster chess player, Almira Skripchenko. Almira was born in the Soviet Union, but she now calls Paris home. And while this is her first WPT final table, she did take a seventh place at a World Series of Poker event in 2009, so she obviously is a great poker player as well. But Almira is not the only chess player or the only woman at this final table. In seat one is online pro and world-class chess player Dinara Katsieva. Dinara was born in Kazakhstan, but grew up in Canada, and if she wins the night, she'll take the title back home to Montreal. Well, that's right, Mike. A lot of chess players, but we do actually have some actual poker players at the final table, including in C3, a commerce regular who won a preliminary event at this year's LAPC, George Rechnitzer. Now, in seat number four, poker pro Dan Heimiller. Dan, who took third at the Brigada Poker Open in C7, remember him then? And in seat five, Belgian pro poker player Davide Katai, who owns a WSOP bracelet from back in 2008. Well, first place tonight is going to be 100,000, and that includes a seat to the season ending WPT World Championship. Now, that's where all the season nine WPT champions will fight for millions more in prize money. All right, looks like the tournament director, Matt Savage, is about ready to roll, so let's get down to the action. And there you see all six players within 200,000 of each other. That's something you see very rarely out here on the World Poker Tour where everybody is so tightly bunched in chip count. That is true, Mike. And let's talk about the Andy's 5,000. Blinds are 20 and 40, pretty expensive. And here we go. First to act, Damon Schramm. He folds his hand. And now George Nixer. He's got those suited cards you like to see flops with, but not him. Dan Heimiller going to limp in here with the Queen Jack. Yes, he is. Now Davide Katai with a Jack-9. Won't play that mess. Uh, round to the chess master. Almira Skripchenko. Yeah, kind of have a, has a nothing hand. 8-4, won't play, but Denara. Well, another great chess player. Says, okay, let's have a flop here. She's got the King-5. And flops top pairs. It comes King-10-3. And she needs right out in bed, and Dan Heimiller beats her in the pot. Quick call by an open-ended Dan Heimiller, but he's not going to catch it there. Seven of spades on the turn. And Denar is going to check that top pair. Gonna give Heimiller the free draw to beat her. Yeah, open-ended straight. Will he catch it? Doesn't happen as a board pair of sevens. 
Denar's gonna check the top pair, and Dan says no moss. The young lady from Montreal, Canada, taking down hand number one at the Commerce Casino. Yeah, I think most pros in that spot with a clean jack in the cutoff would have raised free flop. Chances are Dan would have won the pot rather than lost it to the chess player, Denara Katsieva. When I started to play poker, I find that there was a lot of similarities with chess. This is why I love the game. Most of the chess players have a lot of necessary skills for poker. They're patient and they're hardworking. Playing chess helps my poker for sure. What talent this young lady has put together, and now she's at a final table on the World Poker Tour. She's first to act in this hand. She has an attractive looking King Ten of Clubs. Well, Vince, we've got a couple other great chess players in the poker world. Guys that have won WPT titles, like two-time champ Howard Letter and Dan Harrington. Both good chess players. Well, right now, this one with King-10 is going to raise. Makes it 105,000 to go Yeah. into the 42-year-old from Indiana, Minnesota. He's going to fold. Well, you like to see her get aggressive under the gun. That's what she's doing. Racknitzer not going to play. And High Miller. Also laying down his hand. Well, Davide could tie out as well, so around to the big blind. Now Almira's got the 10-9 suited, 10-9 of diamond. She's going to make the call. So the women chess players are going to battle it out here. Oh, Whoa. Called? King 10-9. Both flop two pair. Almira quickly checks. You're going to see castles and queens and rooks and bishops all thrown at each other right here, Vince, I can tell you. Denara with the top two pair. Going to make the continuation bet 130,000. Mm -hmm. Well, Almira going all in, and I don't blame her here. There's two hearts on the board, a possible straight out there. All right. Good call. Now she's made the call, and she's going to love it. Oh, as Almira turns up the bottom two pair. She's got the top two pair. Her opponent has two outs, as we say. Must catch a nine to win this pot. And look at this. Denara has more chips. Got it covered. So Almira about to get checkmated right out of here in sixth place. Unless a miracle happens. Here we go with the turn. Denara loving this situation. Here we go with fourth street. Oh, a nine oh. on the turn. Oh. And there you see the shock look on Almira's face. She can't believe it. And there's a disappointed look, one of unbelievable anguish by Denara. That is an abomination for Denara. Now must catch a king or a ten to win the pot. So an unbelievable draw out on the turn. Seven of diamonds on the river, and Almira is going to double up. And I can assure you, Denara feels like she lost her queen and both rooks right there in an instant. That is a complete nightmare for Denara. But Almira Skripchenko now is the chip leader with that extreme luck. On we go. Damon Schramm from Minnesota, not going to play this hand. Reknitzer out, Dan Heimiller also folding. So now it's up to Davide Katai. Now he's going to let the girls battle it out again, and look who has a big hand. Come on. Uh, she's going all in. Can't call. Well, Denara's pot committed. She's in the big blind, only has one big blind left. So she recalled any two cards here. Unfortunately, she's dominated as her opponent has ace 10. She has a 10 deuce. Let's see if she can get lucky. Well, Brunson hand, will she get lucky with it? It seems like if there was any poker justice, she would get lucky here after the last hand. Will Denara run out of dinero? We will see. Five <laughs> cards to come. Well, here comes a flop, an ace right in the door. As it comes ace, king eight. Unfortunately, Denara drawing dead to win as we saw Damon and George fold a two. It could come Queen Jack where she could split this pot. That's her only hope to stay alive. Doesn't happen as the six comes off. So that is gonna do it for the sweet lady from Montreal. She is gonna finish in sixth place, but you talk about tough luck. Lost to a two-outer when she would have been the dominant chip leader at this table, Ben. That's Denara's fiance, Emmanuel, in a state of shock as well. To get that kind of hand, to get that tough beat. Oh. Well, that's something you don't see from guys that bust each other. Yeah. And Mike, she has to walk away in sixth place. We are down to five. We have to take a quick break, but coming up, we'll hear how this tournament will change people's lives. We'll have Tony Dunst with the raw deal and another edition of Five Questions with last year's WPT Invitational Champ, LaRon Washington. Stick around. It's a, a huge 
adrenaline rush. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour, brought to you by ClubWPT.com. We're at the WPT Invitational, where five players remain. And they're the beautiful Royal Flush Girls. They're at every WPT event, along with Kimberly Lansing, Mike Sexton, and myself. Everybody wants this coveted WPT title, as well as that $25,000 entry that goes to our champion for his entry into the season-ending WPT World Championship. Back to the action. Yep, George Racknitzer, Commerce Casino rounder, folds his hand. Dan Highmiller, pro player, picks up Ace King, and he's going to raise it. Makes it 100,000 to go. Dava D going to fold his hand, and now it's on our chip leader. Cheers, Stephen again. <laughs> that's, that's for me to know and you to find out. Well, this could be interesting. She's got a nice hand. No, she's going to lay down fives. And now it's on the part-time model and a lawyer. Raise. That's Damon Schramm, and he says raise with ace-10. And he's come over the top here, going to make it 200,000 to go. All in. And quickly, Dan Heimeller goes all in. Oh, you're going to send me home already? I was going to ask you the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing for me at home. I got three-day-old Chinese and a half a bottle of milk. Oh, this could be a disaster for Damon, the 42-year-old from yes. Minnesota. Yeah, if you don't stick around, no free buffet. This is a tough call to make. You're not really pot committed at this point. I think you can easily lay this down. Well, you see how confident Dan looks about his hand, too. I mean, I think it should be an easy lay down with the tails of Dan Heimiller. Call. And he's made the call. Mm -hmm. Yay. Pair? Well, right now, the lawyer's case about to be closed if he doesn't get luckier with the ace-10 against the ace-king. The gavel has hit the lawyer's hand at this point. High Miller got him wrapped up with ace king over ace 10 with five cards to come. Here's the flop. A king. a king right on the flop as it comes king nine six. Then High Miller sort of praying to the poker gods there, saying, Thank you, thank you for that flop. Now let me just avoid two running cards to make it straight. There you go. Five comes up. Winner, winner, chicken dinner for Dan High Miller. He doubles up. Yes, he does, and that is going to put Damon Schramm. On an extreme short stack. So Damon is not out, but he is crippled, just as we saw Dinar was a moment ago. As we've been saying, the WPT Invitational started several days ago as a fantastic poker party for charity. Tony Dunst was in the field at the start, and he has quite the tale to tell in this week's edition of The Raw Deal, brought to you by Rise. The strategy going into a charity tournament changes considerably from one with a normal buy-in. How so? I'm Tony Bond, 18 Dunce. Let's break it down. The structure is going to be a lot more fast and shallow, so things can get done quickly. That means you have to adjust your strategy so you're going all-in more pre-flop and calling other people's pre-flop all-ins with a wider range of hands. This also means that there's going to be a greater luck factor in the tournament and a decreased edge for the more advanced players. People are definitely playing a lot crazier than normal. They stumped all his chips to this guy. The other thing to keep in mind is the quality of opponents. Many will be good, many others... Ah, I don't have anything! <laughs> not so much. In something like the WPT Invitational, your average recreational opponent is going to be somewhere between moderately and substantially more famous than normal. And your average professional opponent is going to be somewhere between noticeably and excessively more drunk than normal. <laughs> How do you get their chips? Simple. Get them off their game by putting them on tilt. Begin by strategically berating all celebrities or people who might be a celebrity on your table. Just tell them that last thing they were in was really awful and caused you to lose all faith in them as a performer. Entertainers have notoriously fragile egos, so after a couple minutes of that, they'll inevitably run off to their trailer for a good long cry and a soy latte. If he's at my table, I'm gonna take his nuts. To dismantle the pros, just generously tip the waiter at your table, then give them a knowing nod and say, please keep everyone here fresh. A couple hours later, and those nasty pros will be way too gone to three bet you like. Knowing that I was drunk, check raising me with probably absolutely nothing. They'll also be much too interested in the party that's happening on the rail to even give playing smart poker a thought. Mom, I'm sorry. For my first time playing in the WPT Invitational, what did I take away from it? Well, seeing as I'm 26 and this was my first charity tournament, I learned that apparently I'm not very charitable. I learned that an open bar is the fastest and easiest way to make a tournament simultaneously the most memorable played in a long time, yet entirely obsolete from memory. 
And I learned that charity tournaments attract a much better ratio than any ordinary tournament. Wait, what? You wanted me to talk about strategy? Like, <laughs> with the girls? Tony may not have found success at this season's Invitational, but our own Vince Van Patten ended day one 47th in chips before eventually going broke on day two. Vince's run is over, but we still have five players left in the hunt for this WPT title, so let's send it back to the booth for the call of the action. But one thing I disagree with Tony about is, I don't believe that actors have bigger egos than poker players. I'm with you there. I didn't know you could have a premium man. Yeah, everybody, everybody <laughs> automatically puts me on bad cards. It's pretty, pretty interesting. Amira Skripchenko is the chip leader, but Dan Heimiller picking up a lot of chips. And look at this, he picks up the weapons of past destruction. Pair of aces just like that. Just doubled up the last hand and now picks up two aces the very next deal. Makes it 80,000 to go. Davidi out. Our chip leader, Almira, also folding. And now it's on Damon Schramm. I'll go on. He's only got 100,000 in total. He's in the blind now, so he's going to put it in with the King Ten of Clubs. Dan quickly calls him, and you can see the expression on the lawyers and part-time models' face there. Yeah, Dan Heimler can hardly hide his glee here. He's got a chance to bust a player right out of this tournament. Let's see if Damon can get lucky here. <laughs> uh, Damon's parents that came out here from Minnesota to watch him. Can he get lucky? He gets one of the kings. King. Well, pretty good flop for him as it comes. King, 9, 8. Tenor king. Tenor king. To the turn we go. Well, it's a 6. This gives him a seven. straight draw. He now needs a king, a 10, or a 7 to win this pot. Otherwise, it'll be case closed for the lawyer. Down to the river. No, another six on the board. So that's going to do it for the likable lawyer from Minnesota, Damon Tram. Yeah, his mom and dad in the audience made the trip from Minnesota to see their son Damon play. That is a big effort for the lawyer and model. Now, well, Vince, you'd have to say the model fell off the runway tonight, out in fifth place. Chicken dinner, yeah. Quick break in the action, but more to come, including an installment of five questions with last year's champ, Club WPT qualifier, Laron Washington. You're watching the WPT Invitational at the Commerce Casino. We'll be right back. I perceive the game of chess actually is like a model of a perfect world. You have 64 squares. You're the master of your own decisions. There are practically no circumstances which will make you make a mistake. And poker for me is how life is. Poker uh, requires a lot of work on yourself and also uh, taking a lot of risks, like in real life. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour, brought to you by ClubWPT.com. Action continues here at the WPT Invitational, where Dan Heimiller is the chip leader and Almira Skripchenko is close behind in second. Let's get back to the call of the game with Mike and Vince. Well, I'd have to agree with Almira that poker images life itself. You've got your highs, you've got your lows, but you got to play the cards you're dealt. All right. Action on Dan Heimiller. He's going to raise with a pair of eights, makes it 120 to go. Davide folding. Around to Almira. She looks down at Ace Queen. These are the two big chip leaders that have hands here. Will the two chip leaders clash here? Yep, the chess champ pondering this decision. Every race. Oh, she's going to re raise. Well, she does come over the top. Let's see how much that's going to be. Oh, it is a healthy re raise. Good raise. Up to 480,000. George Ricknitzer, who plays a lot at the Commerce Casino, has a play of hand here tonight, folds. And I think Dan knows she's going to be pot committed, meaning if he comes over the top, moves all in, she's going to call. So he also knows he's probably at best going to be in a race situation. But Ty Miller going to fold here. Just wants to wait for a better spot to put his chips in there. Doesn't want to race for all the money. I was counting how many chips I'd have left after we went all in because I have a little bit more. Last season, Club WPT qualifier Leron Washington went from small town boxer to big time WPT champ. Earlier this week, I sat down with Leron to find out what it's like to live a dream. In this edition of Five Questions. 
Describe the feeling of winning a WPT event. Everything happened at once, and I was just so amazed and so excited to be able to come out here and be with the pros and celebrities. Then, you know, when I won the tournament, LeRon Washington has done it. It was just like an extra wow, it was icing on the cake. What type of pressures come with being a WPT champ? Learning how to change your game up. After everybody see you on TV, they think they know your tails and how you play, and so I try to use like reverse strategies and stuff like that. And just the pressure of being a WPT champion and trying to live up to it with all the other elites that won the bracelet. So I have to ask you, pocket aces, good yeah. hand or curse? Uh, I think it's a curse. <laughs> Now, I mean, I got knocked out the world championship last year. Of course, I went all in with pocket aces, and Devil Fish called me with pocket jacks, and he remembered the jack. This year at the Invitational. Look what happened to Ron on the river. Just had two aces, all the money in before the flop, six on the river. Yeah. Wow. I, I never get down on myself. Whenever I know that I went in with the best hand, you know, regardless of result, I'm, I'm already happy. Leron, there are people that look up to you as a boxer and now as a poker player, but who is your role model? Who do you admire? Well, uh, boxing first and foremost, I admire Floyd Mayweather. He's just so smart, he's intelligent. I don't think he ever be beat. Poker-wise, I, I admire Doyle Brunson. I just like his style of play. He's never too excited or nothing like that. And I had a chance to uh, meet him last year at the Bellagio, so that was a dream come true of mine. And uh, I felt like a, a little, <laughs> Little kid. Describe the feeling of knocking someone out when you're uh, boxing. It's a, a huge uh, adrenaline rush. Just feeling the power that you're putting into whatever punch you're throwing and connecting with someone. You can just feel it like bones breaking and just shattering and things like that. And when you see someone hit the canvas, you just get that feeling like you just accomplished something major. But you know, hey, we can all get knocked out in boxing and poker tournaments, so. Well, guys, as you can see, LaRon Washington proves that with the right opportunity and a great attitude, you can make anything happen. You know, Kimberly, you're right. What I love about LaRon's story is that he took the seat he won from ClubWPT.com and turned it into making his dream a reality. He not only became a WPT champion and won 100000 here at the Invitational last season, but he went on to play at the WPT World Championship in Vegas and did it all by being a member of ClubWPT.com. And the good news is that anyone can follow in his footsteps by joining ClubWPT.com for only $19.95 a month. People can play all the poker they want for their share of $100,000 in cash and prizes, including a WPT tournament seat every month. Well, Leron is living proof that you can take that small monthly fee and turn it into a real life-changing opportunity. Now, it'd be great to see another club, WPT.com qualifier at a WPT final table. Yes, I still feel Leron's pain. He got knocked out with two aces against two sixes on the river. Ooh. Okay, in this hand, we have a couple folds. High Miller with ace, seven of clubs, doesn't raise. Well, he actually just called before the flop. And Davidi could tie now with jack nine, no raise by him. Here's the flop. And it's a nice one for High Miller hitting aces. High Miller continuing to camouflage the fact he's got an ace in his hand by checking the flop. Davidi not going to bet behind him. He checks as well. And on the turn, High Miller hitting three of a kind, going to trap. And he keeps trying to throw this guy rope, but the guy's not grabbing it. No. Now seven comes off. High Miller with a full house here. Aces full of sevens. I check. Checks again. Okay, Queen High is good. What? Queen High is good. I have a little bit better than that. Well, his opponent yeah, tells him nice. Queen High is good. Wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just shows you folks, all trappers don't wear fur hats. He could use one. He checked so quickly on the turn. I was sure that you had trips. Don't wise up the suckers. <laughs> so much for your legendary, you know, thin value bet. Almira yeah. with a little trash talk there. <laughs> well, the chess player giving it to the poker pro. We're coming back with more action in just a moment. This is my 360 camera. Not only do I see Dan Heimler, but I see who's ever behind me. There's Cindy Violet. Jeff Matson. Hello, Matson. I see Duhamel. Hello, Mr. Duhamel. The toilet! Oh my god, the toilet! Knock up! There it is! It's not the possible. toilet! How many Chinese chips do you got? I have zero. That's f***ing right. That's right. Are we drinking? <laughs> Well, that is the very understated 
Mike Matisau. <laughs> Always fun to have him around a tournament. Well, you see how much fun everybody has at this event, including Mr. Matisau. Maybe he's applying for his next job. Man. He played this event, of course, got knocked out. Right. Apparently hit the bar and is having some fun with us. <laughs> but we're down to four players here right now. Look at this, Almira Skripchenko. We're going to push chips in. We have the local L.A. guy, George Folding. Dan Heimiller picks up two queens. What a hand for Heimiller. Former finalist at the WPT at Bergata, season eight. Race 200,000. And he's going to bump it with his queens. 320 to go. Davide from Belgium going away. Almira was the champion of the world at 16 and under. The European champion in chess, and now she's playing poker. She's been a four-time European chess champion. The French champion as well. And right now makes the good lay down with the Queen Jack there. And Dan Heimiller is now the chip leader. Oh, it seemed close. Looked like you were thinking about it. I don't know. It's like... It's like <laughs> In the early levels of the WPT Invitational, most players opted for a $200 rebuy, knowing that new chips not only gave them renewed life on the felt, but that 100% of the proceeds went to a charity that helped folks gain a better life for themselves in the real world. Earlier tonight, Mark Laranger, president and CEO of the nonprofit organization Chrysalis, was presented with a $100,000 check donated on behalf of the WPT Commerce Casino and the players of the Invitational. Mark, we are are so happy to be able to contribute $100,000 to Chrysalis. Tell us how Chrysalis plans on putting this money to use. Well, Kimberly, Chrysalis is all about helping the homeless and those in poverty get back upon the path to self-sufficiency mm -hmm. through jobs. We offer a hand up, not a hand out. So the $100,000 will allow us to be able to provide everything that will be necessary to remove barriers to employment so our clients can get back to work. Mm. Well, on behalf of the entire poker community, the WPT is so proud to be able to contribute to such a fabulous organization uh, such as Chrysalis and the work you do is unbelievable. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks, we're honored to participate. Action does continue here at Commerce, so let's get back down to Mike and Vince. Well, it's so great that $100,000 was raised from this tournament for Chrysalis. It's wonderful to see charities benefiting from poker tournaments. Back to the table here, Davide from Belgium folding his hand. Hurries. And now the chess champ, Almira Skripchenko, with the ace nine of clubs. And she's going to raise it up, makes it 120,000 to go. All right, now George Recknitzer on auto muck, folds his hand. 300,000 total. But Dan Miller with pair of eights, a nice mid pair, going to raise. That's the only player that can break her at the table. And when you get raised by somebody that's got more chips than you and you're looking down at an ace nine, it just doesn't look that big anymore. She's going to throw it away. So Heimiller picking up the pot with a nice re-raise. Yep, Dan Heimiller extends his chip lead. Four players remain going after the WPT Invitational title. We're coming back for more on the World Poker Tour. We want to welcome you to the WPT Invitational. This event brings the top poker players from around the world to play with the celebrities in Hollywood. I don't really play. I was very excited to come to the WPT Invitation because you get a chance to play against all the celebrity poker players. I actually had Elvis Fandiari at my table, Barry Greenstein, I had Liv Bory, one of them is Rocky Brothers. People love to play at Converse Casino because it is the best place to play in LA and all over the world. Welcome back to the WPT Season 9, brought to you by ClubWPT.com, where four players remain. Well, the lady that was speaking there is Dinara Katsieva. She finished sixth in this event after she took a bad beat, but certainly got through a lot of tough players to make it to this final table. Back to the felt, a couple folds around to High Miller. Looks down at a queen deuce of clubs. Well, he's in the small blind. He's going to raise it up here. Makes it 130,000 to go. And right behind him, Davide Katai. I go in. Who hasn't played a pot yet at this final table, moving all in with ace nine, right over the top of Dan Heimiller. Davide playing tight so far. He's a World Series bracelet winner. You don't think that would you know, raise with a good hand? And now he's aggressive, pushing Dan Heimiller out. Now, Vance, I've seen monogram cuffs before. I've never seen a monogram sleeve before. He's got the hooded sweatshirt with his name on the sleeve. Well, the hooded sweatshirt became famous 
when Phil Locke won this exact tournament years ago. Davide, the poker pro, out of Anvers, Belgium. Nicely done. I went six months in LA to learn English. At this time, I didn't know anything about poker. I saw on television the War Poker 2 uh, show when uh, Doug Bronson beats uh, Lee Watkinson in Heads Up. Folks, that was a performance of the ages right there by Doyle Bronson. And uh, I said to myself, one day I would like to be there. And now, eight years later, I'm here in the final table. So there you go. Doyle Brunson creates another monster, and that is Davide. We're coming back as four players remain at the WPT Invitational. I'm Michelle Banzer. We are the Royal Flush Girls, and you're watching the World Poker Tour. Welcome back to the WPT Invitational. Four players remain going after this title here tonight. There you see Dan Heimiller well out in front with over two million in chips. This is Dan's second WPT final table. He's looking for his first WPT title. Yep, what a player. He used to be a cab driver in Vegas. Now he's playing in the big time. This time a pair of sevens, gonna raise with it. Makes it 120,000 to go. Now right behind him, Dominique Katai looks down at ace queen. Big hand. Here's a World Series bracelet winner. I go in. He's going to push with this. All in. Amira goes away. George out. So little to lose. So little to lose. Yeah, he's got over twice as many chips. Um, I just can't see him laying this hand down here. I guess I have to call. I call. But he's going to call it. Exactly right. You might not like it, but you have to call it. You got to hope he's got the over cards where you're in a race situation. If Dam Heimeller wins this race, he'll be the monster chip leader with three players left. If Davide wins it, he'll be the chip leader. Hello. Hello. Yeah, there's Davide's friends rooting him on ringside. Davide love to get lucky here and double up. Here comes the flop. Well, an ace right on the flop. Davide is taking the lead with two aces. How do you like that? Oh, <laughs> nice hit for the Belgian. A couple more cards to come. Now the king comes off on the turn, so Heimiller must catch a seven on the river to win this pot. Just a two-outer. Can he do it? No, a queen of diamonds on the river. Heimiller sits back down. So just that quick, Heimiller loses half his stack, and Davide is now the chip leader with four players left. Oh, to the delight of his friends, Davide from Belgium making it happen there. We've reached the halfway point in our coverage of the WPT Invitational. So, Mike, what are your thoughts on the play we've seen thus far? Well, Kimberly, what's intriguing to me is the high blind and ante structure right now. In other words, very high blinds in proportion to stack size. Davide now has the chip lead thanks to that last hand with Dan Heimiller, which should help get him to the heads up. But these players are going to be forced to become even more aggressive. Definitely, Almira and Dan have shown that they can build momentum, as Almira did early in this match when she got lucky against Donara, and Dan's run started after he knocked out Damon. If they continue this streak, I think we could see either one of those players go heads up against Davide for the title. And Vince, what do you make of our remaining players? Kimberly, I'm very impressed by Dan Highmiller. Now, if you've noticed, he has been involved in well over 75% of the hands we have seen tonight. Also, just keep an eye on George Rechnitzer, the local pro. You know what? I'm worried about him. There's a search party out for him. Hasn't played a hand, but one quick double up by George, and we could have a real fight on our hands, believe me. Well, gentlemen, we shall see. But the one thing we do know is that only one of these four players will walk out of Commerce Casino as the next WPT champion. Please join us next time for WPT's continuing coverage of the WPT Invitational brought to you by ClubWPT.com. Until then, for Mike Sexton, Vince Van Patten, Tony Dunst, the Royal Flush Girls, and the whole WPT team, I'm Kimberly Lansing saying thanks for watching. Good night.